Well, I'm here with Lainey and Kate. Hello, both of you. Hi, hi. And we have a book, an amazing book, new, more or less new as of this recording by Dion Brand. It's new and collected poems called Nomenclature, and it has a fabulous introduction by Christina Sharp. And many of the poems are kind of about living in Montreal or being Canadian um, and blackness in Canadian life and so forth. And we've chosen a few epigrams from a series of numbered epigrams called Winter Epigrams. And it's a, not a new poem. It was written some years ago. And we've decided to pick three epigrams, uh, numbers 4, 10, and 23. And I think we'll just, the three of us will take in turn to read them, and then we'll just talk about them. We'll talk about what's epigrammatic about it, what the relationship is between winter and epigrams, winter in Canada and epigrams, where it's, you know, cold. So, Lainey, why don't you read four, Kate, you read ten, number ten, I'll read twenty-three, and then we'll just improvise comments on it briefly. Okay. They think it's pretty, this falling of leaves. Something is dying. I'm getting old, I know. My skin doesn't jump anymore. I am not young and in the company of people. I am old and in the company of shadows. Things pass in the corners of my eyes and I don't catch them. What more proof do you want? Look, I am writing epigrams. The superintendent dug up the plants again. Each June she plants them. Each September she digs them up just as they're blooming. This business of dying so often and so soon is getting to me. Lainey, there's a winteriness here. Maybe we project just hearing the word winter, thinking about that cold season. Maybe we project a lot, but go ahead and project onto this epigrammatic moment. Is there a natural relationship between winteriness and ep being epigrammatic? Perhaps. I'm thinking that the first one we read is kind of autumnal, maybe because it, right at this minute it's autumnal here in Philadelphia. Mm. Um, the movement into the winter, which it sounds like um, that time of year that amazed to me behold, this particular one that just takes me right to that, mm. which is a very poem about mortality. They don't call it fall for nothing. Correct. Right? <laughs> I mean, we're, we're descending down. Yeah. Things die. Yeah, so that's actually... Section four is sort of the early, the early phase. So, so I guess the just... death is the winter. Connection to winter is, is, the, is the death right. thing. That's, winter is yeah. the deathly season. Kate? They're all very, you get a sense of terseness and time sensitivity. Like time is running out. I need to be efficient, boil it down, say last words. So there is a relationship between winteriness and writing epigrams. I think so. I think it's, mm -hmm. it's, they're, they're efficient and um, condensed. Mm -hmm. And then there's the question of the, in the one that I read, 23, the superintendent, there's a cycle. So, you know, when you get in the middle of the winter, you think, boy, everything is cold, everything is minimal, my choices are limited, it's really dark in Montreal in January. And yet we know that there's a cycle and that spring will come again. And so this idea that the superintendent, who I assume is the landlord or the, what do we call that in the New York City apartment, uh, the, the, uh, the super, what's the super? Mm -hmm. um, is doing the gardening around the apartment building. Plants them in June. September brings, digs them up. Why? Lainey, why would anybody, why would... Because they're annuals, they're not perennials. So, again, here we are in September. But September. So September is the entrance to moving toward winter. But what I hear in this one, too, is that there is this labor of living. And, the, and then the dying is over and over and over. It's not just one's mortality. It's, it's a constant death and rebirth. Right. September, even in Montreal, is too soon to get rid of the annuals. 
So Dion, for the speaker, is complaining. This business of dying so often and so soon mm -hmm. is getting to me. Let's talk about, and while Stevens and other poets, Keats, famous for thinking about this, um, Williams, William Cross Williams, spring is generative and that's when my juices get flowing and I start to write more and it is the creative moment, spring to summer, mm -hmm. right? Keats was interested in autumn being the moment where change occurs. But mm -hmm. winter, winter's a little different. So let's just sort of riff a little bit on winter and poetry. I mean, we've talked about epi the epigrammatic impulse, which is to think minimally, but winter is the month of uncreativity. Winter is the month of not getting, not having the juices flow. So clearly, uh, this poet is really thinking about that a lot. Kate, what are your thoughts about this topic? Well, I'm sensing some delegation in here too. They think it's pretty. The superintendent to me is has a like a is like a godlike figure. Has a, sort of a sense of an overlord. Mm -hmm. um, so, unlike the poet who revels in spring and the ego's creative impetuses, here it, I get the sense that things are happening to the speaker. Mm -hmm. That. Uh, the speaker has near the end, is nearing the end of a life cycle and things are happening to her. It's not pretty, it's death. Right. That's an aesthetic, right? There's another one, Lainey, mm -hmm. number eight. Cold is cold is cold is not skiing or any other foolhardiness in snow. It's as if one, the poet of winter, cannot allow herself to have any fun in, there's no snow sports here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is a cold Let's minimum. call it like it is. Yeah. Snow is cold, it's not just pretty. Yeah. It's a little grumpy too. It's grumpy and yet there's an irony here, which is that so many epigrams get made. Mm -hmm. Isn't that the creative irony of having nothing, of being, of being minimal? How about this one? I can wear dirty clothes under my coat now. <laughs> Be who I am in my room, on the street perhaps, sorry. Be who I am in my room on the street. If I wear my clothes, regular mm. old clothes, I go mm. out because I have. Perhaps there'll be an accident though. This is a very cool thing. I think do we actually do this in the winter, don't we? Like you can go out because you have layers, no one will notice that you you're wearing your essentially your pajamas. On, yeah. Just throw your coat on, yes, yes, yes. It's kind of an inversion of that, um, what was that cheesy book from, I don't know, 30 years ago? When I'm an old woman, I shall wear purple. But here it's like what she's secreting under her clothes. It's not, it's not for public consumption, it's kind mm. of her inward turning. Mm. Mm. Well, there's something about invisibility and this the speaker wants to prove to the reader that they are getting older. And, and one of the proofs is in writing the epigrams, and another proof is, I am old in the company of shadows. Things pass in the corners of my eyes, and I can't catch them. So it's almost like this rumination on this liminal space between living and death and this awareness of it. Mm with age so there's aging there's also in the inaccessibility relative inaccessibility of the sun which warms us and it is a challenge in these in this whole group of 54 poems a challenge to creativity let me read one more and get your response to it and then we'll then we'll have some final words it's number 29 and it's a reference to the sun not being out i think it is the sun if it's not out in the morning and one day is lost. If it's not seen for weeks, and months are lost, with long, dank spells as this, I pick up the stitches on my funeral shroud. She's certainly being consistent with that. What do you think of that one? It's like the opposite of the hymn to the sun tradition, like talking to the sun poems mm -hmm. that are mm -hmm all over the world, 
in every culture. Mm -hmm. It's an undoing of those rituals. It's just a different approach to it. Like what? It's a lament for the sun not being there, as opposed to a speaking directly mm -hmm. to the sun, mm -hmm. speaking to the absence of the sun. Kate. But picking up stitches is also an act of creation. Right. Mm. That's that's She's an idiom for sewing or knitting, knitting. her shroud. Yeah. So she might not be out gambling in the sunshine, but she's, <laughs> she's still creating. It's very Dickinsonian. But one. creating her death garment. Yeah. There's also something that, because I read it and you guys aren't seeing it, you may not have picked up. Uh -huh. If the sun is not out for one day, we lose a day. If the sun is not seen for weeks, we lose a bunch of months. Oh, a slippage of time. Yeah, I mean, there's something... Like, duration is a problem, mm -hmm. and we need sun. One day, okay, but if it's not seen for weeks, we lose months. And then we have the word spells. So there's something magical about duration in the winter. One wants to cast a spell on duration. Mm -hmm. All right, final thoughts. Winter epigrams. I you could like comment on just the po poetry of epigrams if you want, or about this particular series. Well, I love this statement at the end of number 10. Um, I am writing epigrams as a proof of aging and moving toward mortality. What more proof do you want? Look, I'm writing epigrams as if writing epigrams could only be written by someone who is mature because they don't have enough time to write something longer. But there's also this kind of pithy, unfiltered uh, energy in in the form often and in these mm -hmm. epigrams in particular. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm thinking I would be so interested in hearing her read these because she uses punctuation idiosyncratically and she doesn't always capitalize the beginning of sentences and I, she creates soft stops that way and then there are also exclamation points mm -hmm. interspersed so I almost love how she scores the work with punctuation. Mm, yeah, yes, punctuation really is important here. Um, well, my final thought has to do with the potential politicizing of the epigram form and also of the black poet, black Canadian poet and Afro-Canadian poet in Montreal writing winter poems, hunkering down mm -hmm. for the winter and thinking about other places. Mm -hmm. These poems were written in the early 1980s. There are a couple that are dated 1981. I'm going to say somewhere 82, 83. And so, and Dion Brand is writing often against United States policy in Central America at that time. That would be the early years of the Reagan administration, the first Reagan administration, when the uh, so-called Contras in Nicaragua were supported illegally, it turns out, by the U.S. And so this is number 42. Monday, colon, Monday. I am one of 100 against the United States in a demo for Nicaragua, the snow still falling softly. So we, first of all, you get, it's a winter epigram, so you get the snow, you're in Montreal. The demonstration is happening in Montreal. There's snow, and the difference between Nicaragua and even the United States and Montreal is a difference of distance and of weather mm -hmm. and of that kind of, it's one thing to be demonstrating in you know, Atlanta or Miami. It's another thing to be up in Montreal outside the United States with the snow falling. Right? There is something even more profoundly political about the demons, given all the falling and the death of the images of winter that are in the, in the seemingly non-political epigrams. Here's one that's overtly about a dem political demonstration. It's got the snow in it. And, you know, I think this is, and there are many like this, and I think this is a, a way for this poet to situate herself in protest by hunkering down in Montreal and being politically different. Thank you both. This was fun. <laughs>